Recently, I met a pediatric neuro-oncologist for the first time. She's a doctor who specializes in treating childhood brain tumors. And while she had some great career advice for me, a conversation that particularly stuck out was how she actually treats these childhood brain tumors. Treating childhood brain tumors is incredibly difficult because while doctors want to kill the cancer in the child's brain, they also need to protect the child's developing brain around that tumor. Even in the best cases, which is complete removal of the brain tumor, sometimes comes at devastating costs. How doctors treat childhood brain tumors is by first surgery, where a surgeon will go in and remove as much of the brain tumor as possible, followed by radiotherapy, in which ionizing radiation hits and kills the cancer cells. But ionizing radiation on a pediatric brain sometimes comes at severe side effects, such as major visual defects, severe hearing loss, trouble with schooling, and one study even found that 66% of pediatric brain tumor survivors were unable to lead normal lives and find long-term employment. Our lab works on a pediatric brain tumor called ependymoma, which is found to have 40% of the cases be incurable. Particularly, we work on a subtype of ependymoma known as Relay Fusion Positive Ependymoma, which has one of the worst prognoses and is found in young patients. Relay fusion positive ependymoma is caused by a chromothripsis in which a chromosome shatters and comes back together. And when this chromosome comes back together, two genes get fused together, Relay and C11 or RF95. These two gene fusions lead to activation of NF-kappa B signaling, which leads to tumor formation. And this fusion alone has been shown to be sufficient and necessary to drive and initiate ependymoma Relay positive fusion. Our lab works with a small molecule drug, CBL0137, to target and kill these ependymoma tumor cells. CBL0137 works by interacting with the DNA and causing several downstream effects. Some of the effects, such as shifting the cancer cells to a more differentiated state or activating P53, which is a tumor suppressor gene, also known as the guardian of the genome. But for this talk, we really care about one of these downstream effects where CBL0137 leads to inhibition of NF-kappa B target genes. So we propose to use CBL0137 to inhibit these NF-kappa B target genes, which ependymoma relay tumors are reliant on. So we plan to use CBL to stop these tumor growth. Our model for this is taking ependymoma tumors from a patient's brain and bringing it to lab to treat with CBL0137. And here you can see we have videos of these cells over time in response to either vehicle, which is our control, or CBL0137 exposure. And as you can see on the left, our vehicle, these cells grow, divide over time and fill up the whole plate whereas our CBL0137 treated cells stop dividing, are slow to grow, and sometimes lead to cell death. So we show CBL0137 can slow and stop tumor cell death, and so we propose to use it as a therapeutic to target these tumor cells in young patients. But with the important caveat is CBL0137 must not hurt the developing brain. Several studies have been done to show CBL0137 is non-toxic in the normal brain tissue and normal tissue. As you can see, the graph on the left shows CBL0 and 3 accumulation in either um, the normal brain or the brain tissue with two different methods of injection. The gray bar shows the amount of CBL0 and 3 7 accumulation in the brain tumor, whereas the lower black bars show CBL0 and 3 7 accumulation in the normal brain tissue. So CBL0 and 3 7 accumulates at significantly higher rates in the brain tumor than the normal brain tissue. On the right, we see the IC50, which is just a way of measuring the concentration of drug used to kill 50% of the cells. The higher that bar is, the more resistant the cells are to the treatment, and the lower the bar is, the more sensitive they are to that treatment. So we can see our two normal samples have significantly higher bars, meaning significantly more resistant to the drug than the lower cancer cells. Now taking this all together, what this means is CBL0137 not only accumulates significantly more in our brain tumor samples, but also the brain tumors are more sensitive to CBL treatment than our normal tissue. Now switching gears here, one of the main reasons for poor prognosis in ependymoma is due to recurrence. Recurrence happens when cells are resistant to irradiation or are missed during surgery, come back and reform the whole tumor. 
Our drug, CBL037, has been shown to take these cells that are resistant to irradiation and push them to a state where they're more sensitive to irradiation. So we propose upon improving the standard of care of a pneumoma by combining CBL037 with irradiation. We also did the same experiment as before, is where we monitored these cells over time in response to either a radiation treatment or a combination CBL plus irradiation. And you can see on the left, the cells that got irradiation grow maybe slower than the vehicle, but still continue to grow and fill up that space over time, where a combination of CBL037 plus irradiation stopped tumor cell growth and led to a lot of cell death. Now here's the quantification of all these different videos I've shown over this talk with vehicle, CBL only, irradiation only, and our combination of CBL plus irradiation. And full change is a measure of cell growth over time and how much those cells grew and divided over that plate. So you have your vehicle and your irradiation having those upward sloping lines, meaning they grew and divided over time. Whereas our CBL and our CBL plus IR have the flattened slope, meaning those treatments stopped cell growth and led to cell death. We have previously used this combination treatment in a different type of aggressive brain tumor called glioblastoma. And here we show that our combination treatment of CBL plus irradiation leads to significantly increased survival in our GBM model compared to either treatment alone. We plan to do this in a pneumoma and offer patients a new treatment paradigm by improving upon the standard of care, by targeting these signaling pathways the tumor cells are reliant on. Now, part of the conversation that really stuck out to me with the pediatric neuro-oncologist is she called herself the defender of the child's central nervous system. While she has a really important job of destroying the cancer in that child's brain, she has an equally important job of defending that child's developing brain and therefore defending that child's future. And labs like the Veneer Lab at OSU are working hard to make her job easier by providing effective chemotherapeutics to target and destroy that deadly childhood disease.